don't judge me if I get it. I genuinely think this is the best Disney ride ever. Good morning and welcome to part four of my Walt Disney World Vlogs 2023. I am currently at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, which is where I've been staying for the past three nights and I've still got another week to go at this amazing resort. I absolutely love it. And I mean, can you see those giraffes there behind me? It has been an absolute dream come true staying here every single morning, just waking up to beautiful animals, especially giraffes. And the weather seems to be a little bit overcast this morning. At least the skies aren't quite as blue as they have been the past few days, but I love it. And I think the giraffes are enjoying it as well. Look at that one on the left. He's just chilling. He's just lounging there under a tree. Oh, giraffes are so, so beautiful. Anyway, the current time is 9.45 a.m. I did wake up at 7 a.m. because I was hoping to get to Animal Kingdom by eight, but then I was so tired because last night I didn't manage to sleep until about three o'clock. In the morning, I didn't get to my resort until about midnight and then I ate because I hadn't eaten. So it just took a while for me to actually sleep so i needed that little bit of extra sleep i think i'm okay with it so yeah i'm going to be heading into animal kingdom a little bit later than i had planned we're probably going to get there at around 10 30 in the morning probably but um here's one last look at these beautiful giraffes there's another one third one who's just arrived as well you can see him in the back oh, i'm gonna miss this so much i know i've still got a week but i'm already thinking about how sad it's gonna be when i don't have this on my doorstep anymore also they do have a couple of other animals here as well it's not just giraffes but giraffes are my fave so anyway i think with that it's time to say goodbye to this beautiful savannah view that we have by the way if i haven't watched the first few vlogs on my channel from this series let me just close the door I didn't pay to have a savannah view. I just paid for a standard room at the Animal Kingdom Lodge and I just got lucky and I got given this phenomenal room, which I need to do the bed. But you, there will be a full room tour, hotel resort tour hopefully coming up very soon as well. So make sure you are subscribed. But at least one good thing about leaving the giraffes today, oh, I can still see them through my window. At least we're going to Animal Kingdom, which has plenty of giraffes and animals as well. So I'm not gonna be gone from them for too long. Quick little outfit of the day before I leave the room. So. On my head, the A bands are lounge fly ones. They're Steamboat Willy. Um, they're quite cute, white and black, so I thought it would go with the rest of my outfit. My t shirt is a cake worthy, all over printed Bambi one, as you can see. I've got different characters from Bambi. I love these t shirts, and I do have an affiliate link which I'm going to leave down below. You can use it if you want to. You get a bit of a discount, I think about 10% off if you want to buy any of these t shirts yourself. Um, and then I'm wearing shorts today. I thought, why not? Animal Kingdom is normally very, very hot, hotter than most of the other parks. It just feels hotter. So I'm wearing shorts there from MS, and then I also thought I would give my feet a bit of a rest today. So I'm wearing these Nike trainers that I bought years and years ago so I've been wearing these I've had these since I want to say 2018 they still fit me and it just means that I know for a fact that they will be comfortable like I'm not going to be breaking them in for the first time I have had them for a while but yeah with that being said let's head out oh yeah and I'm bringing my lounge fly bag with me today because I feel like I wanted to carry a bit more than normal like water and stuff and my other bag just wasn't doing it so got a small backpack with me also I've just put sun cream on so that's why currently my face is extremely Really shiny. The Animal Kingdom Lodge lobby is looking pretty busy this morning. Yesterday there was hardly anyone here but it's very loud and hustling and bustling. It is a Saturday I suppose so maybe a lot of people are checking in. Well the bus journey from Animal Kingdom Lodge to Animal Kingdom only took about five minutes if that it was amazing because animal kingdom lodge as you can imagine is the closest resort to animal kingdom at the theme park so yeah very excited about the fact that we're here already also i just got onto the bus like basically as i, as I got to the bus stop uh, there was a bus waiting already for animal kingdom so i jumped right on it and thankfully made it because otherwise i would have had to wait another like 20 minutes for the next one so the lux was with me i love this view so much here we go this is the entrance of animal kingdom this is my favorite park here at walt disney world and once again security checks took no time at all literally a second if that and now we are on our way fully into animal kingdom can't wait they have a number of photo pass locations a couple i've noticed right in front of the entrance which is good they've got so many photo pass places here in disney world i wish disneyland paris had more of them big shout out to a cast member called johnny there he was amazing like look at look at the smile that i've got on my face that, that's because of him and that was just at the entrance so i forgot what finger basically when you scan in to any of the disney parks here at walt disney world you have to not only scan your park ticket or magic band but you also have to put like a finger thing and i forgot which finger it was i thought it would be my right one so i tried the right one first but like johnny saw that i was confused and he was like 
it's the right one, I know it's the right one. So I did it with my right finger and then it didn't work and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, it's probably the left one. And then he was like, no, I was wrong, it's the left one. But he was smiling the whole time, it was so lovely. Then I tried the left one, that one didn't work either. So then I was like, oh my God, I feel really bad, like what's happened? Maybe something's happened to my card. Then I tried the right one again, again it didn't work. And then Johnny, completely calm, completely smiley, lovely, not like stressed or panicking whatsoever, he was just, he had such good energy like throughout this whole little process he was like no, no no don't worry i'm just gonna have to get somebody to reset it for you but it's all good you know once it's done you can use whatever finger you want it's gonna be magical you can even use a pinky if you want and another cast member came and um, reset my card basically i don't know what happened to it apparently it's quite common sometimes it does happen i asked him if it was better if i had a magic uh, band and he was like no magic bands are even worse when it comes to just like sometimes they just don't work so you ha they have to get reset but shout out to Johnny at the entrance of Animal Kingdom on the 25th of March 2023. He was phenomenal. Oh, look at those ducks. We've just entered Animal Kingdom and we've already spotted some animals, just some Disney ducks. But one thing I quite like about Animal Kingdom is that the entrance, you kind of come through here and you would expect that the first thing you'd see in front of you would be the Tree of Life, which is the icon of Animal Kingdom. But it's not. You first have to go through this like foresty walkway to get to the tree and i really like that it's more of a quiet subdued entrance to a theme park and look at those ducks down there again yeah like it takes a while it, you know you get to appreciate a bit of nature before you get into the hustle and bustle of the park but just like that we are now at the beautiful tree of life look at it i love the music they're playing as well it's very relaxing very calming oh my god Oh, I love being in this park so, so much. It's just so, so much fun, this park. It's relaxing, it's fun. The food here is some of the best food in any Disney park. And then it, there's just, just some little sweet parties around the park that kind of just really bring it alive. Like, oh, I'm doing this thing on this trip where I'm trying to really pay attention as to in which, like, which park I feel the happiest. Because a lot of you guys sometimes ask me, Sam, what's your favorite Disney theme park? I've been to most of the Disney theme parks around the world now, apart from Tokyo. So I'm trying to figure out what my favourite one. So obviously I know that Disneyland Paris will always be number one, but in terms of the other ones, I'm really trying to figure it out by just trying to realise which ones I feel the most happy in. So Animal Kingdom is definitely one that I really like. Firstly, I want to give another big shout out to a cast member called Totti, I believe, who just took some photos of me by the Tree of Life. But also I want to show you this. So I've got another couple of the statues for the 50th anniversary. And this one's Stumper and Bambi right in front of the tree of life very cute considering i'm wearing a bambi t-shirt today it's just cool this makes me happy i'm not even the biggest fan of bambi as a film to be honest but i do think bambi is cute and just all the animals in that film are adorable it is incredibly hot today i feel like i'm sweating <laughs> quite a lot but i'm probably gonna go to and i don't normally do this this is gonna be my first time if i go to it but um, I'm gonna go to Starbucks, basically. I haven't been to any Starbucks since I stepped foot into Florida uh, three, four days ago now. But I kind of need a really cold drink. And there's a Starbucks literally around there, so it's not too far. And I feel like a cold drink will boost up my energy so we can get ahead going with the day. Got my drink. Cheers. I've already drunk most of it, or over half of it at least. But I love these Disney cups. It's just, they're more magical than normal ones. Of course, I've got my name on it as well. It says Disney, very cute, it just reminds me of Walt Disney World. However, again, as I've said in the past few vlogs that I've uh, done for Disney World, I do find it bizarre how they've got so much plastic here in Disney World still. Because in Disneyland Paris and in Europe just generally, you don't really get plastic cups as often or as easily because they're trying to be a lot more environmentally friendly than the USA is, I guess, but... This is really good. I got a coffee frappuccino, so... Nothing too special, nothing too extravagant. I have had this before and I've had it before in the UK as well. It's nothing special or unique to Disney World or the US, but it's coffee and it's cold and it's a frappuccino, so it's tastier than normal, so. Well, Creature Comfort, you've definitely comforted me. I really enjoyed that coffee frappuccino. I think I'm gonna head back towards the Tree of Life and to the other direction because I actually have a reservation, a dining reservation at 145 at one of my favorite restaurants here, Yak and Yeti. And the way I was going that way would lead to Pandora Land, you know, with Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey, which both have very long queues at the moment. I think Flight of Passage is at like 90 minutes or maybe even 100. 
and then Navi River is at 50 or 60 minutes. So, so I'm going to try and do those later on. I actually do also have a Lightning Lane Genie Plus, four flights of passage that I bought this morning. It was $16. I knew that I really wanted to do that ride today on my first Animal Kingdom visit, and I just I know that the line for that is going to be long, very long. So I've got that, but I didn't pay for the regular Genie Plus, just the one $16 thing, because you can do some individual Lightning Lanes for some of the most popular rides. So yeah, we're gonna head into, I wanna say, Dino Land first, because I really like Dinosaur the ride. I think that's gonna be my first ride of the day. And so that way I'll be near the area for Asia as well, for Yak and Yeti in about an hour's time. On our way to Dinosaur, look, I found Dory. So, so cute. These gold statues are so fun to look out for around the parks. But there we have it, heading on into Dino Land USA. And it looks like there's already something happening. Oh, over there, people are crowding over on this bridge. This is fun. Well, that boat just left, but there's another boat coming and I think I spot maybe Russell and Doug on there. That's cute. They used to do a proper meet and greet here in Animal Kingdom before the pandemic, but I think since the pandemic, they've just become sightings like this and it's quite cute to see them on a boat. It's Russell and Doug. Woo! They're in search of their colorful friend, Kevin who happens to be a very rare 13-foot tall bird. Have you seen her? Adventure is out there. And so is Kevin. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have to be on the lookout for Kevin. She does wander around Animal Kingdom from time to time, but I am going to find Dino so now, Dinosaur. We are in Dino Land, but Dinosaur, which is an attraction that, in my opinion, is quite underrated. But I absolutely love it. And there we have it, the entrance to Dinosaur. Probably my favorite, well, second favorite attraction in Animal Kingdom after Flight of Passage. It is so good and underrated, as I said. I love this uh, dinosaur skeleton we've got going on here. It almost feels like we're in the Natural History Museum of London. And a full-on dinosaur awaits us. But don't get fooled, this isn't the only dinosaur you're gonna be seeing when you go on this attraction. There are way more inside, and the wait time, only a 15 minute standby wait, which isn't bad at all. It says on there, dinosaur, it's fast, it's a blast, it's in the past. I love it. Here are the warnings for this attraction. So dark places and scary dinosaurs. Um, for safety, you should be in good health, free from high blood pressure, heart, back, that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, 102 centimeters though. So you don't have to be too tall to ride this, but please don't get full just because you're tall enough. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna get scared of this. Children might find this attraction scary because trust me, I'm a full grown adult. And the first time I went on dinosaur, I found it terrifying. Here's a photo so you can see my face. It's a scary ride, but it's also a lot of fun. Let's head on in. <sighs> it's so nice to be in the AC a little bit. It was so hot outside. But see what I mean? Like, it really does in some ways feel like you're in a museum. I love it. The queue time for this attraction is just amazing. It's almost a shame that it's only a 15 minute wait. I mean, look at this. It says survivors on here and we're about to get to the coolest room of all. There you go. Look at that. So, so cool. And there are so many other skeletons around as well. Also, I'm basically just walking onto this ride, to be fair. That's how dinosaurs have been presented to the public since the study of fossils began over 150 years ago. That the future is truly in the past. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. He's an iguanodon, and I'm certain that he has the key to understanding these magnificent creatures. It can get kind of choppy out there, so keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Boom! You're back with one additional passenger extra large. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Trust me. Go wrong? So there you go, we've had the official briefing now and it's almost time to get on our little jeeps and you can see what the vehicles look like down there. Time travel commencing in yeah, this way. Way. Here we go, we're on. This is secret. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the Iguanodon and get out before that asteroid hit. Let's go get that dino. Computer, what are you tracking? Skybackasaurus. Not our dino. Now! No! Hang on! Oh no! Our dino. Go, go, go! Oh, oh my god! 60 seconds. We can't stop now! Keep going, keep okay. going! Where are we going? Cops on Nathus. Ah! That's it! Abort mission! Abort! Abort! Oh my god! 
Did we make it? Fucking bad! You made it! Oh, I good! Good! I guess you made it back with you. Oh, I better man. find it before security does. Thanks for everything! This ride is an adventure! Right, we are off Dinosaur now and it leads to a cute little gift shop all about dinosaur merchandise, which is cute. You've got these dinosaur puzzles over here. Those car things look quite cool. <laughs> these are fun. And then we've got some actual dinosaur plushes, dinosaur t-shirts. Yeah, literally just a lot of dinosaur merch. But it looks like Daisy's doing a little meet and greet right next to Dinosaur and she doesn't seem to have a queue, so I think I'm gonna go and meet her. Perfect. Thank you very much. Hi Daisy, how are you doing? Oh, thank you so much. So good to see you. You like my ears? You look so stylish, Daisy. I, I love your outfit at the moment. You've got the little dino badge thing going on there as well. And I noticed some designs over there. Did you make them all? Yeah, the outfits. You're phenomenal. You need to teach me how to do that because I might be wearing slightly nice shirts, but compared to you, not quite nice. <laughs> of course. Did you get the photo? Thank you. So this area of Dino Land is an area that Disney's not sure about and I don't think anyone is sure about in terms of what they're going to do with it. They've thrown quite a lot of concept ideas as to what they're going to do with it but basically I don't think it's going to last very long. I think its days are numbered unfortunately. Already they've gotten rid of one of the rides here in Dino Land which was like a roller coaster. But um, this one still remains and it's an attraction that I haven't actually ever been on yet. So it's only got a 10 minute wait and the ride is officially called Triceratops Spin. And because I don't think this is going to be here for much longer, I feel like we might as well go and ride it at least once. Hey, Spinners, it's Chester here, reminding you for your safety to stay seated with that seatbelt fastened good and tight as you spin. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, it's nice to get a bit of wind, actually. Oh, nice view of uh, Dino Land as well. Look, we've got the entrance of Dino Land, the dinos over there. We've got nice music playing as well. Um, yeah. We've still got about 40 minutes until my lunch reservation and Donald is doing a meet and greet here. His queue doesn't look too bad so I think I'm going to join it. Hi Donald, how are you doing? Oh, you're so cute. I'm loving your dino badge here. So, I love the outfit. Nice party going on. Yeah, I'm wearing Bambi, kind of going with the animal vibes. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> so cute. You like Bambi as well and Dumbo? Yeah. <laughs> You're so cute. Aww. Mom makes you so cry? Sad. It is really sad. I right? think it's because some, his mom died, right? Yeah. Like right at the beginning, too. So sad. Your hat looks amazing. I'm distracted by your hat, Donald. You like my ears as well. Yeah, see, no, really. I can't, I can't do the whistle. I know I should have you. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't expect to be seeing you today. Otherwise, I would have definitely come like prepared for Donald. Because he is number one. <laughs> Can we get some photos? Thank you. Oh. Perfect. Thank you so much, Donald. Good to see you. I oh, love you too. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Of course, you have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. See you, Donald. Bye. <laughs> that was a very cute meet. And the wait time was probably only about 10 15 minutes, so not bad at all. It is now 1.25. And I've got about 20 minutes until my reservation. So I think I'm going to just head over to Asia and see if they might give my table a little bit early. Donald was cute, absolutely adorable. He's always number one. I am now heading towards Asia now, but we've got this giant dinosaur to walk past. And I mean, look at that. I'm literally going under him. Like, that's his head. <laughs> the guy, or should I say the dinosaur, is extremely tall. I am going to miss this area of Animal Kingdom, though, if they end up getting rid of it, which, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure they are going to at some point sooner rather than later it's very much like a carnival vibe very old school like carnivals festivals etc and it's so ironic that it says there rides of extinction because i feel like pretty soon all of the, this area this whole area is going to be extinct sadly okay that, that, that was, i'm done i'm like i don't know that was pretty oh, good sorry, though i'm giving you this let me sorry oh that's hilarious oh that's funny we'll vlog her in the wild
Anyway, as we're heading on to Asia, which is where Yak and Yeti is, my favorite restaurant here in Animal Kingdom, I want to show you some of the beautiful sight lines of Animal Kingdom. This is one of the main reasons I love this park so much. It just looks beautiful no matter where you look. And then all the details as well. So both the theming and just the greenery and just everything else about this park makes it so fun to walk through. And I'm so excited to be finally dining back at Yak and Yeti after three years. This is my absolute favorite restaurant in the whole of Disney World, I think. Yak and Yeti is a table service restaurant, so you do have to book for it and reserve a place or they do also have a quick service restaurant next to it so you can also go there if you wish to i've never actually tried the quick service yak and yeti restaurant but the main restaurant the table service is like i said one of my absolute favorites i first dined there in 2017 my friend rebecca booked it for us and i fell in love with it straight away so actually since 2017 yak and yeti has been the only restaurant that i've managed to come back to every single time i've been to disney world because i loved it so much i was like i have to go every single time i think i've been there like four or five times it might be my sixth time going in today so let's head in well i'm at my table we're on the second floor i think this restaurant is much bigger than you might think from the outside it doesn't look too big but they do actually have i think three levels of space and dining areas this room though i've never actually eaten at before and i've got the side corner table which is always nice especially because i vlog but it's also very nice to be in aircon because i would have mercy afternoon time at animal kingdom it gets pretty hot let's have a quick look at the menu i already know what i want because i normally get the same thing but they do have some cocktails some margaritas here 16 dollars each some desserts I also think I know what I want for dessert already. I'm very, very much a creature of habit when it comes to Yak and Yeti. It's one of the few restaurants that when I tried it the first time in 2017, I loved what I got so much that every single time I've come back, I've gotten the exact same thing. Now I'm really hoping they still have it. So let's have a look. They've got small plates here, bang bang calamari, pork pot stickers. That sounds good actually, the firecracker shrimp. I might want to try that. That's $13.99. We'll have to come back to it. Then they've got some shareable stuff here, meant for two, but this is only one of me, so maybe not the best thing to get today. But you can see they've got uh, ahi tuna nachos, lettuce cups, Korean fried chicken. That sounds good. They've got some soups and salads down here. And then the specialities is what I normally go for. So in terms of specialities, as you can see, they've got a miso salmon, a chicken tikka masala, a coconut shrimp, and then my absolute favorite, which is the baktapo duck. And the baktapo duck is a roasted half duckling, plum, barbecue sauce, jasmine rice, and stir fried vegetables. And this one is $37.99. And I'm definitely gonna go for that today. Here's a quick look at some of the other items they've got on the menu though. They do have a pretty vast menu. It's all mainly Asian cuisine, as you can imagine. They've even got like a burger, cold beef burger, if you're a picky eater and if you don't like Asian food. So yeah, and these are the sides. I normally like to get a side of garlic noodles. So I ordered my food. Absolutely lovely cast member server by the way his name was Jesus amazing I was telling her about how much I love this restaurant and how it's the only restaurant that I keep coming back to because normally when I come to Walt Disney World because I don't get to come too often whenever I do come I try and like try different restaurants and new restaurants that I haven't eaten at yet but Yak and Yeti has remained like a staple one for me that I've come back to every single time and he said he really loves it as well and that is very happy to hear that he also basically I was trying to decide one side or like a starter and I told him I'm thinking about the shrimp and I asked him what his favorite was and he said the firecracker shrimp as well as the beans were two of his favorites so I was like I'm gonna go for the shrimp so yeah I'm gonna be eating quite a lot of food but like I said I've been waiting for this moment for three years like I love this restaurant so so much it's one of the few restaurants where I love the food so much that I actually think about it like when I'm not in Disney World I have moments sometimes when I'm like oh I could really do with a back to for a duck from Yak and Yeti. Do you know what I mean? And it's so funny, as I was vlogging, obviously, because I'm vlogging, somebody overheard me. There was a couple right next to me. They've gone now, American couple. And um, the guy came to me as he was leaving, and he was like, the way you describe Yak and Yeti is exactly how we feel about it as well. Lovely man. And he said that him and his wife, I think, stumbled upon Yak and Yeti by accident years ago, and they've been coming back to it again every single visit. So there you go. It seems to genuinely be a very, very big fan favorite. And like I said, because of that, it is quite popular so make sure you do book it in advance if you want to eat here at Animal Kingdom Yak and Yeti the table service restaurant just book it in advance on the app or on the website so you don't get disappointed so my drink has arrived I went for apple juice and you get free refills which is amazing the lovely cast member Jesus again reminded me he was like if you want some more apple juice it's free so just let them know and then I went for some tap water as well inside just ice cold tap water because it is very hot now those of you who might be a bit more observant might have noticed that this is in fact my first table service restaurant of the strip. I arrived to Walt Disney World about four days ago now and it's the first time I'm actually dining at a table service restaurant. The reason for that is on my last visit to Walt Disney World, basically every time I've been here apart from this recent one, I was always on the dining plan and the dining plan was just always added to the package so it was like free if that makes sense. They used to have this offer on for UK visitors where the dining plan would be thrown in for free 
and that's what I used to normally do so that's why I would often go to all these table service restaurants now unfortunately since the pandemic Disney World has gotten rid of the dining plan there are rumors that it might come back one day but it hasn't come back yet so when I booked this package for my Walt Disney World trip, and like I said, I booked this trip in 2021, early 2021, so it has been a while. They didn't have the dining plan offer on, but they had another offer instead, which basically they give you dining credits, and it depends on what kind of hotel you're staying at and how many nights. So because I'm staying in a deluxe resort, Animal Kingdom Lodge is a deluxe resort, I get like the maximum amount of dining credits per day. So I got something like $900 worth of dining credits for the 10 days that I'm staying at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And the coolest thing about this is that because I'm a solo traveler, this is like one of the few benefits of traveling solo. So yeah, because I'm on my own, all of the dining credit is for me. So even if you came as a family of four or five, you'd still only get the same amount. So if you stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge for 10 nights, you would still only get about $900, which you'd have to then obviously divide between the four or five of you. Whereas now I've got $900 worth of credit for me. So I'm gonna use my credit for this meal. I'm gonna see kind of how far it gets me because I am in Disney World for two weeks. And this is my first time doing it without a dining plan. Like I said, I've still got dining credits, but it's a different system. So I'm not gonna be doing like a full on table service meal every single day, but I do have some reserved. Like I said, I'm going to be using the dining credit for it. With that being said, my starter has arrived. This is the firecracker shrimp, which, as I mentioned, my server also recommended. Yasus said is amazing. I love shrimp and I like spicy food as well. And firecracker shrimp sounds very much up my street. So hopefully this is going to taste as good as it looks. OK, let's give this a taste. This is a shrimp. Wow, that's delicious. Definitely has a kick, but the shrimps themselves are cooked so well nice and crunchy and coated really well as well and also it comes with a bit of a salad underneath too which just makes it a bit more of a dish you know not just the shrimps on its own look at the spice how beautiful i'm very pleased with this i'm glad i got to try it and yeah unsurprisingly it's delicious and just like that my main course has arrived as well i forget how big portions are here in the usa that is a lot i'm gonna have to definitely take some back to my hotel room i think but this is the duck. Again, quite a big portion. I'm really looking forward to tasting it. Hopefully it's gonna be just as good as it's been and all my previous visits to Yak and Yeti. It comes with a side of vegetables. You've got the jasmine right underneath it. And then that's the sauce on the side as well, the plum barbecue sauce. But the duck itself is so good that honestly, I don't even think it needs sauce. I could easily eat it on its own with the veggies and the rice. Right, let's see if this dish is just as good as I remember it. I mean, look at this. This is a lot of food. This is gonna be my only meal of the day. Right? Lord have legit mercy. The duck cuts through so perfectly well. Got a bit of duck, a bit of rice. It's beautiful. This dish is a thing of beauty. Like, definitely my favorite meal in the whole of Disney World. Honestly, it's so, so good. Obviously, you have to like duck, but if you do enjoy duck and if you just like Asian cuisine, Come to Yak and Yeti. I can only really comment on the duck because I've only ever had the duck and of course I tried the shrimp today as well. That was also good. But as you saw, they have a pretty big menu with loads of different Asian dishes. So I'm sure you'll be able to find something that you love. But I'm gonna enjoy this huge duck now and I'll get back to you afterwards. Those noodles, Lord have mercy, they're pretty good, but there was no way I could finish them. So I've asked for some to-go boxes. It's really cute. They've got the Yak and Yeti restaurant logo on them as well. Um, so I'm gonna take that back to my room with me but I did want to also get a dessert because despite the fact that I am pretty full I can always eat some dessert especially when it's chocolate cake and this dessert here again if it's the same as it has been in the past few years then it should be really really delicious so yeah we're gonna dig in now look at the size of this by the way again pretty big but I am quite confident I should be able to eat at least the majority of this cake so Let's take a little bite. I say little, it's actually significantly bigger than little, but you know what I mean. If you love chocolate cake, like I do, then you're gonna enjoy this. It's very moist, it's very gooey, it's very chocolatey, and for a chocolate lover like myself, it's absolutely heavenly. Right, let me quickly show you the bill so you can see, oh, what's that? Interesting, that must just be with the, when they printed the receipt. But yeah, I wanted to show you exactly what the total came. I love that they've put this cute little Mickey on the bottom. The total um, came to about $88. Obviously, I am going to be using my gift card, and I already gave them my gift card, so that's kind of all paid for. The only thing I'd need to pay would be the tip, because we're in the US, and it's uh, saying if you want to do 18%, it's about $16 for tip, or 20%, $17, $78. 
Now I've decided to just go ahead and give $30 tip because my server was phenomenal and I really think he deserves it. Also whilst we're here, firstly big shout out to Jesus who was my server. He was amazing but I also want to give a shout out to another one of the cast members here. John, his name was I think, he just walked past at one point and he saw that I was vlogging and we chatted a bit about vlogging and he came up to me and he was like, I really appreciate the fact that you know there are vloggers like you who come here and we need it for the restaurant and it's like good to know like how we're doing etc. So it's never happened to me before in that way for a cast member to actually come up to me and say thank you for vlogging. I thought it was amazing and obviously when he said that to me I was like yeah no I absolutely love this restaurant and I always love to come back here and he said he really appreciates it and I thought that was just so kind like he didn't know me he didn't know my channel or anything it's not like he's seen my vlogs he just saw that I was vlogging and decided to come and say thank you and yeah that was really lovely. Well I am back into the outdoors after a very lovely but very big meal. I am honestly so full that I think it's gonna be my last meal of the day. Like I cannot see myself eating anything for the rest of the day. It is 3.45 to be fair. So it's not like, you know, it's banging them in the morning or anything. Within a few hours, it's gonna be evening time and then it's gonna be time for bed. So it's fine. But yeah, that was an amazing meal. Just a lot of food. So make sure you come hungry like I was when you come to this restaurant. And yeah, everything was just as good as normal. The chocolate cake I really enjoyed. The duck was fantastic. I love it. That is my favorite meal. It's my go-to meal. And like I said, I've only ever gotten that. I would like to try more of their menu, but like I said, I love that duck so much that it is just, it's just difficult. I feel like if I lived in Orlando, if I lived close to Walt Disney World and Animal Kingdom, then maybe I would try some of the rest of the menu. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have though, if you've been to Yak and Yeti yourself, what's your favorite thing to get there? What have you had there? Was it good? I'd love to know. Regarding the noodles though, the noodles, the garlic noodles, I feel like they weren't quite as garlicky as I remember them to be now. Bear in mind that the last time I was here and in this restaurant was over three years ago, so it has been a while since I tasted them. So I might be wrong, they may not have changed, but from memory I feel like they were just a little bit more garlicky. I still enjoyed them, but they weren't quite as good. I'm on my way to Pandora now because I've got my flight of passage lightning lane, but I wanted to bring attention to this. It says, please enjoy our beautiful restrooms. I love it. <laughs> They're literally saying the restrooms in here are beautiful. Now, I'm not sure if I've ever been inside those particular restrooms or toilets in Animal Kingdom. Oh, there's a little duck there. But if you have been, let me know. Are they as beautiful as they claim to be? How beautiful are those flowers, by the way? I love their colour. Nice contrast between the rest of all the green that we see here in Animal Kingdom. And then another thing I love about this park is that it has so many random little bridges and pathways across the whole area of the park. It's the biggest Disney park in Walt Disney World. You may not feel it because it probably has the least amount of attractions and rides, but in actual fact it is the biggest because it has to be. I mean, it hosts loads of animals. There's a whole like savanna area for the safari, which is one of the attractions here, which I'm probably not going to do today. I'm going to do that on my next Animal Kingdom visit in a few days time, but yeah. Huge park, gorgeous views, loads of bridges, my favorite. And just like that, we have now gotten to possibly my favorite area in the whole of Animal Kingdom, which is of course Pandora. I mean, look at that. What a phenomenal, outstanding entrance. The fact that somebody actually built this, I mean, not just one person, but it's man-made. This whole thing is made by people, by human beings. I find it so fascinating and also just incredible. I mean, just the details on this are so stunning. There's so much to look at and so much to see as well. And this whole thing is huge. Let me tell you, I first saw Avatar when I was about, I don't know, 20 or something, quite a long time ago. And I only saw it once in the cinema and I thought it was all right. I didn't love it or anything. But despite that, the first time I stepped into this land, Pandora, I think it would have been probably in 2018 or something, I was so amazed. And I think that's the magic of this land and just what Disney have managed to do with this land because even people who don't really like Avatar or don't really care that much for it, they still find this whole structure phenomenal. And <sighs> leave a comment down below, by the way, let me know what you thought of Avatar 2 because I also saw that recently. Obviously, it came out not long ago. And that one I really enjoyed as well. I thought it was visually stunning, but the storyline, not the best. And please look at the floor as well. The floor is also very much detailed and it really comes to life at night. So I'm hoping to make another visit to Pandora Land either today or next time I'm here during the dark so I can show it to you. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, I do have an individual lightning lane for Avatar Flight of Passage between uh, 3.50 and 4.50 as you can see here on my app. And currently time is 4.25, so perfect timing. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. And here we are inside the Lightning Lane queue. I think there might be a little bit of a queue still because Lightning Lane doesn't mean no queue whatsoever. It just means that it's not going to be quite as long as the regular standby line. Now, if you haven't been on Flight of Passage before, there are a couple of things you should know. Firstly, it is the best attraction in the whole of Walt Disney World, in my opinion. 
And secondly, unfortunately, it's one that some people struggle riding. So it's not the easiest vehicle to get to. So different sizes, different body shapes might struggle. There is a test seat though, right in front of the entrance of the ride. So you can always test it out just to make sure before you start lining up for the ride. But honestly, even just a queue line for this ride makes me happy. You can hear the sounds of the waterfall going on and then these beautiful sights everywhere you look. Okay, we are nearly there. Probably have to wait Please about 10 minutes or so. And stand on the number you are given. Hi, and welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're gonna have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi Rite of Passage. Riding on the back of a Banshee by being genetically matched and linked to an Avatar. Yes, got it. <laughs> now, let's find you your Avatar matches. I've got given our three glasses here. Who runs the program? Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Jackie Ogden from the Pandora Conservation Initiative. Please go to the number that matches the number you're standing on now. First, stow your gear in the storage containers on the back wall. This should include all bags, cameras, and other items, including cell phones. Then get onto the chair as you would a bike. Straddle the seat, step forward, and sit down. Slide your hips forward until you are against the chest pad, and then move your feet all the way forward. It's important to hold onto the hand grips at all times. After you're seated, back and leg restraints will be firmly engaged. Then put on your flight visors. Okay, so we've got our flight visors, which are basically 3D slash 4D glasses. We're going to put them on. I'm going to really quickly show you what the room looks like, but I can't actually take you on the ride. So there you go. This is what the attraction looks like. This is what you need to sit on. Hopefully you would have seen it earlier as well. And then, yeah, the whole thing is a 3D, 4D experience. So I'm going to store you here for now and speak to you later. A few minutes later. Right, my hair's an absolute mess. The ride just finished. I, such a good ride. It's I, this ride gets me emotional. I cry every single time I ride this. And I've been on this ride multiple times before. <laughs> I need a moment. So, I feel like I'm a little bit more calm now. Let's talk about this beauty of a ride. Avatar Flight of Passage in Pandora Land in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Walt Disney World. I genuinely think this is the best Disney ride ever, like in all Disney parks world. But of course, I haven't been to Tokyo Disney yet. That might change my mind, but I, I don't see it changing my mind because this attraction gives you the ultimate feeling that I think most people want to experience in life, at least I do which is flying like it really does feel like you're flying and if you've seen any of the avatar movies the two that are out so far you'd know that visually it's a beautiful film even if you're not the biggest fan of it even if you don't like the story for instance or whatever it's a beautiful stunning film and to be able to fly through that film what more do you want from life really like that's why i feel so overwhelmed and just like emotional throughout it like you should have seen my face throughout it obviously i'm so glad that i wasn't vlogging because i just i mean to be fair there's not much point anyway because it's a 3d 4d experience so it's not going to be the same no matter how i try to film it but you can of course always like youtube videos of it if you want to i'm sure some people have filmed it before but it's like four minutes long as well four and a half minutes so it's quite long and it literally takes you on an adventure and I am just smiling throughout it. It's like a mixture of smiling, screaming a couple of times because there are moments of like just a little bit of danger but not like in a bad way, just like thrill, thrill danger vibes. And then you feel the smells, you feel the water, you feel the air on your face, the movements that you do with that little motorbike vehicle that you're on just feel so legit, like you're just so immersed. <laughs> If I went on this ride every single day of my life, I feel like I'd be the happiest person alive, honestly. It gives me so much hope when I'm on there. It's like four minutes of dopamine just like injected to me. It is such an amazing ride, guys. It's so good. And look what I've just bumped into. A cute little squirrel on the outside exit of Avatar Flight of Passage. He's just gone away though. Anyway, let's have a quick look inside the shop, the Avatar shop at the end of the ride, just in case they have some cool merch. And they've got a number of new merch that I've not seen before. This one says, five years on Pandora, the world of Avatar. Is it a water bottle? I think so. Yeah, some kind of water bottle. They've got these mugs as well. Um, oh, these are lovely actually. They're like, kind of like cups rather than mugs. It says Flight of Passage on them. These are cute, never seen them before. And then here we've got a couple of t-shirts with some lovely designs. Look at this one here. Pretty cute. That section here seems to be glow in the dark, which is very fun. Look at that one there. And then look, this one says Experience Pandora, a world like no other. These are nice because that's more or less what Pandora looks like at night time as well here in Disney World. What else have they got here? Let's have a look. Oh, they've got a bunch of toys for children as well from the Avatar movies here. 
And then this boat jersey, they've actually started selling this in Disneyland Paris as well. It is lovely. I really like the colour and I think it's just so beautiful. But like I said, I don't love Avatar, the film franchise, enough to want to buy it. I wish I did because it's a gorgeous spirit jersey. I just don't feel like I deserve to own it. Like it would be deceiving, you know. I feel like if I wore that, people might come up to me and be like, Oh my God, Avatar, I love it. It's so amazing, isn't it? I'd be like, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> and then it would just be a bit awkward. I like this t-shirt here though. I love the colour on this and the kind of subtle design with the little white outlines and then oh this is nice experience pandora it's the lovely hoodie as well see if they saw that spirit jersey that we just saw but instead of it just saying avatar it said flight of passage or Walt disney world or something like that then i would absolutely buy it because i love the attraction i think pandora land here in animal kingdom is one of the most beautiful lands ever but avatar the films themselves they're all right. Anyway, here we've got Satuli Canteen, which is probably my favorite quick service restaurant in the entirety of Walt Disney World. I can't eat it there right now though because I am still very much full from Yak and Yeti. So I think actually I'm probably gonna leave Pandora Land for now. I was gonna do Navi River Journey as well, but the queue for it is currently 70 minutes long. So that's a little bit too long for me. I feel like it might get a bit lower later on in the evening, maybe just before closing time at 8 p.m. So I'm gonna quickly head over to the Lion King show. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get in or not because the last showing for The Lion King is at 6pm and it's going about 5.25, only about 35 minutes ago. But maybe the fact that I'm a single rider, just one person might come to my advantage again. And there you go, we have just made it. This is the Harambe Theatre, Festival of The Lion King. You can see the show times here. We're about to make the very last one at 6pm. It is exactly 5.30, so yeah, good timing. Hello, how are you? <laughs> yeah, not bad, thank you. Looking forward to the show. The cast members here are amazing, guys. They're so, so good. And actually, speaking about cast members, earlier at Pandora, I met a phenomenal cast member. Her name was Ruby. I think she was custodial, but she was just so lovely. We chatted for a while, and then she took my photos, but not just one, not just two. She literally was like, should we walk around and take some more photos of you? And you know, as somebody who does social media, that is like perfect. So Ruby, if you ever end up watching this, thank you so much. We have just come into the auditorium. This is quite a big theater. It's a theater in the round, so Lion King happens right in the middle. And it is actually pretty fun and immersive as well. All right, well, it's about 10 minutes left now until showtime. I guess I'll speak to you afterwards. And videotaping are allowed during the show. You we're in the giraffe team, guys. Hey, what are you doing? Slow down, slow down! I'm supposed to be center stage! Who's driving this thing? The mouse! Festival of the Lion King was cute. That finished about an hour ago though, because randomly it suddenly started to rain quite heavily as well. So me and everybody else just took undercover somewhere. I happened to be right next to Yak and Yeti, but under the quick service area, there was a bit of a roof. So I just stood there for about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so until the rain stopped. It was quite nice though, just watching it. And um, yeah, it needed rain, I feel like. It's cooled off a little bit. But I am heading towards Expedition Everest now because I wanted to head over there about an hour ago as well. But like, we've got time for one more ride before the park closes at 8 p.m. And I love this ride, so hopefully... I think they do single rider, actually. I need to check, but even if they don't, the wait time has really dropped at the moment. Quick warning signs about Expedition Everest. Legend of the Forbidden Mountain. So it's a high-speed roller coaster type train ride to the reef of the world that includes sharp turns and sudden drops, traveling both forwards and backwards through dark, winding tunnels. Again, 
again you've got the uh, safety measures going on there and the ride is just over there it looks so cool like just again the theming in this park is phenomenal anyway i've joined the queue i asked the class members if the single rider was open they said no because the actual standby line is more or less a walk on that was literally the class members words he said it's basically a walk on anyway so we don't have a single rider tip of the day for you so if you are not a solo traveler like i am if you're with a group of people and if you want to ride some of the popular rides like expedition everest then do it just before park closing time is currently 7.30, we've got another half an hour until the park officially closes. Look at the details again, just in the queue line. For Expedition Everest, there is so much to look at, so many little hints and tips about this park. I wish I had more time in Florida so that I could explore all the little details of all the parks, but especially Animal Kingdom, because it's, it is my favorite theme park in Walt Disney World. But if you want to find out some more details, I would highly recommend Molly from Mammoth Club. They have a YouTube channel as well. You've probably heard of them. They are amazing, Molly especially. I feel like Molly is a version of me, like the American version of me. Is that putting myself on a pedestal? Maybe, <laughs> but I do really admire her. I think she's amazing. So go and check out her videos. She has loads of videos about like all the parks here and the secrets and the details and just a lot of tips as well again though look at this this is just a random other room <laughs> on the way to the actual ride so normally you'd be waiting here if the lines are long you'd just be waiting chilling here and looking at all the details look at that honestly like how amazing is this like this is a full-on museum one could spend i don't know a full 30 minutes or longer just looking at all the details and reading all the stuff here inside the queue they've got photos here of different animals here look at that jungle animals details about them midland forest animals over here look at that tiger mountain animals there's a yeti mask over there that is fun wow seriously i love this park so so much and i really hope that by watching this vlog right now if you haven't visited walt disney world yet you can see why i love this place so much it says here respect the power of the yeti the weight of the evidence leads to the inescapable conclusion the yeti is real dun 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 and that literally was a walk on by the way guys because we've got one more, one more little thing to go there you go and the ride is literally just over there on our left hello just one person all the way down thank you number seven fantastic cute i love number seven there you go the roller coaster has arrived Attention, awesome let's head in ben, to meet you. here we go guys we're going up sun is about to set beautiful oh wow look at this view let's go lost my cap but thankfully you can hopefully see it it's just over there so luckily i don't have to go to class but i literally thought i was gonna I'd, I'd lost it forever thank you to the seat behind me for for catching it in a way also it's empty there's nobody else in the in this roller coaster that's in front of the cap but not here there you go let's pick that up sorry <laughs> my cat went to the other one <laughs> thank you i'm so glad i literally for a moment i got sad because i do really enjoy this cap but yeah thankfully it got saved well i've got my cat back thank the lord that ride is so much fun it is such a great roller coaster probably my number three favorite ride here in animal kingdom it goes fight of passage dinosaur and then everest although i really do like navi river as well which we haven't done today hopefully next time we're in this park look at all these amazing merch by the way i love it i love that they've got like specific merchandise for different rides like 
I conquered Expedition Everest. Shout out to my friend Rebecca as well. She absolutely loves this ride. I think this might be her favorite ride in Animal Kingdom or maybe even in the entirety of Walt Disney World. To look at this t-shirt here. Sorry. She's all yeti taken. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Gotta love a pun. Also just having a quick look at some pins here because I haven't really done any pin shopping or even pin window shopping yet. But yeah, they've got some cute ones. This Hercules one is quite fun. Look at that one. That's cute as well. Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh my god, look at that! There's a, a Quasimodo from Hunchback. That's cute, never seen that before. And then we've got the Seven Dwarfs here, there's a Snow White one. Goofy, my bae. I quite like these mugs as well. Let's have a quick look at them. Oh, they're um, kind of metallic mugs, so probably won't break as easily. The mountains are calling, it says. And then Walt Disney World. I thought it was going to be like a Mount, um, Mount Everest one, Expedition Everest one, but it seems to just be a generic Walt Disney World one. They've even got Splash Mountain, look. Splash Mountain has closed since January, unfortunately. It's being changed over to a Tiana ride, which I'm actually very excited about. But yeah, this is the little shop at the end of the expedition. Oh my god, these kids. Oh, it's not really kids, they're, uh, they're teenagers, very excitable teenagers. Can you hear, can you hear their noises? Oh, to be a teenager again. Um, yes, as I leave the shop, I also want to give a shout out to the person that was sat next to me. Ben, his name was. He was from England, from the UK, I think somewhere up north. Um, we chatted quite a bit before the ride started. Obviously, it was just us, and then the road, all of the roads behind us, in fact, were empty, as you saw. I did ask him as well if he was okay with me filming throughout the, uh, the ride, and he was absolutely fine. He said he was checked the video out. So, Ben, if you watch this, hello. Can say hi? Oh, hi! Hi! Hello! <laughs> I love it. But yeah, Ben said he'd been on Expedition Everest for the first time, literally just before he went on it again with me. So he'd done it once, then he enjoyed it so much he wanted to go again as a single rider, I think. And that's why we ended up being sat together. It was actually nice to, you know, hear a familiar voice. Not because I know the guy, <laughs> I don't know Ben, but because he's from England, where, I'm, where I live, you know. I don't know what I'm saying. I am quite tired. It is currently about 20 minutes to 8. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to head out of the park, to be honest. Because, like I said, the park does close at 8. And there is no nighttime show at Animal Kingdom. It used to have something a few years ago. But um, nothing at the moment. And it's nice, actually. I don't think it necessarily needs a, a nighttime show at this park. Um, I think it's a good park the way it is, to be honest. It'd be nice to have something to end the night with. But I am okay with how I've spent my day so far. Look how quiet this pathway looks at the moment. We've still got about 20 minutes to go until the park closes and you are allowed to still go on rides and do things all the way up until eight o'clock when the park officially closes. But yeah, there's hardly anyone here. Look at it, it's just, it's pretty crazy. I think the fact that it rained as well. Oh, look at that, there's a duck over there. Hello, Mr. Duck, how are you doing? Oh, there's another one very cute but yeah I think it just um, yeah made a lot of people go back to their hotels or just change parks etc there are loads of ducks around they're just chilling I think on my way out of the park I'm gonna head into Island Mercantile which is yeah. one of the main shops here in Animal Kingdom just to have a quick look it looks like they've got quite a lot of Avatar stuff here again that Avatar Spirit jersey which every time I see it I'm like it looks stunning but do I deserve it you know I actually did enjoy Avatar 2 quite a bit I enjoyed it probably more than the first one weirdly um, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5 if I had to rate it but yeah I just don't love it they've got a dress as well that dress looks pretty too and yeah we've got some more of the spirit jerseys over here what else have we got here okay a backpack with Pandora on and then that's the dress you can actually also get it for children so it's a cute way of matching with the kids if you want to I quite like that t-shirt here it's got Nala on it I think and it says queen yeah that's quite nice those ears too and then is this meant to be some kind of spirit jersey no it's just a top yeah a nice color nothing on the back this is a size extra l by the way or actually xxl oh my god how adorable is this they've got an encanto baby thing baby shirt outfit this is just so cute and tiny obviously i don't have kids so i don't even no, is this for like a three month old or even smaller? Newborn? Okay, newborn. That's why it's so tiny. Very cute. They have a section dedicated to the 50th anniversary here still. These are quite nice. I think I've seen these before with the 50th castle right in the middle. I wonder how much these are. Let's have a quick look. $39.99. So these are about $40 each. Actually, not too bad. It does say here though, purchase is limited to two per item based on school per guest. So I guess some of these items are limited. 
these ones are the very expensive 50th anniversary stuff which I mean they look cool to be fair they're not even really my thing even if I wanted to purchase them or had the money for them I still just don't really like the aesthetics but each of their own I suppose they've got those spirit jerseys I am actually thinking of potentially buying that spirit jersey they've still got a couple of spirit jerseys from the 50th and it's like difficult to choose so this is the one I'm thinking of getting I think I showed it in yesterday's vlog as well but um, I really like the colors for this one but then they've also got this one this one's the one that says um, Walt Disney World, but not in like the traditional Walt Disney World logo, just in a different font. I quite like the front of this though, with uh, Walt Disney World and then the 50th and Mickey's face. So I don't know, I'm still thinking. Crocs seem to be huge in the USA. So they even sell 50th anniversary Crocs here, which is funny. And then they've got some more 50th stuff. So these are 50th anniversary uh, Christmas decorations. This one's cute. I do like buying ornaments from, you know, every Disney visit that I do, particularly like special ones, so I might get that. We'll see. And then they've even got a bum bag here, as well as a photo album. So yeah, quite a nice selection actually in Island Mercantile. They've got the Vault collection here, which is nice. The Spirit jersey, I quite like the colours of. Look at that, you can get the Walt Disney World flag over here. And then they've got magic bands and these little cups as well with the castle on them oh my god how fun is this look at that that is low-key a bit creepy because it's obviously old school mickey mouse it's mickey mouse from when walt disney world was first opened uh, in 1971 but i kind of really like it i might potentially buy this guys please don't judge me if i get it i understand that it's probably very weird and not the most beautiful of t-shirts but there's something about it that's calling my name and you know what the walt disney world's 50th anniversary song goes by answer the call if mickey's calling my name buy that t-shirt i'm gonna have to answer it wow they've even got a whole section dedicated to the main street electrical parade i really like this one as well this t-shirt this is all i believe from the vault collection yeah this is so cool oh, i don't know they've got so many cool things that are very much unique things that not everyone's gonna enjoy but this is very much my style like even this i quite like look at that it's a hoodie it's got photos different photos like actual photos of Walt Disney World's history and old school ones as well. I mean, again, you can see here, Mickey's very much looking not uh, as new as he does now. Yeah, these are cool. That one as well, the iconic um, mushroom from the Main Street Let's Go Parade. These are very cool. I'm impressed. I just got home back to my room and look what mousekeeping have done this is so cute they've laid out all my ears here I had them all on this desk here just below the TV just kind of all oh, in like a little bit of a mess to be fair and they've decorated them and I love it like look at that all the kind of blues and purple ones here on one bed it's just so cute and then they've put kind of the red ones here this is cute. Oh yeah, I've also got a bunch of random, um, what's it called, ranch sauces from the other night that I didn't use. But yeah, what a cute, what a cute thing to come back to. Like, I love little touches like this. They've also kind of tidied this bit up for me as well. Again, it was. it's not like it was like completely untidy, but it wasn't quite as nice as they've made it out to be. They've put all like my makeup and health stuff bags over here. And um, <laughs> look at that. Even my AirPods and just like all my... Yeah, this is pretty cute. Big shout out to Mousekeeping. I didn't even realize they were going to come here. I did actually leave them as some tip in the bathroom again, just in case, because I wasn't sure. Because I think I was told they were going to come every other day and they came yesterday, but I guess they come every day. I don't know. It is nice to come home to this though.